Well, the best response, I believe, to deception is to tell the truth. So this little phrase, truth be told, it's one I use a good bit. It's, a, it's an idiom. It's a, it's a common expression that has a, a meaning a little bit just beyond the words. If we use the whole phrase, it would probably be something more like, if the truth were told. Just truth be told. And if you look it up, the definition is, I, I must admit, or in actuality, or just to be honest. But when you use the phrase, it's almost in a confessional tone. There, there's a sense of reluctance with it. You know, maybe you're in a conversation, or you've been listening to something, or... You've been interacting, and maybe you've been quiet, or you've, you've kept your own peace or your own counsel, and finally you decide it's time to speak. You say, well, truth be told. I'm not necessarily anxious to do this, but let me tell you what I think the truth is on this particular topic. You see, if you know the truth and you don't express it, you participate in the deception. The assignment, as I understand it, is to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You can't withhold part of the truth and think you're honest. You can't allow people to continue on a path of deception without telling them the truth, without ex accepting some responsibility for the path they're on. We're going to have to be willing to be truth tellers. Jesus modeled that for us when he stood before Pilate, the Roman governor. The, the, the accusations against him had crumbled. The people they had paid to testify against Jesus had contradicted one another. The case that they had against Jesus had totally unraveled. Pilate understands he's innocent. Pilate recognizes that it's the jealousy of the Jewish leaders that have caused them to commit him to the Roman governor and to ask for his execution. The Jews don't crucify people. That's a Roman punishment. And Pilate can't find a way. He, he understands he's an innocent man. He's frightened of that. He washes his hands in a bowl of water and says, I'm innocent of this man, as if a bowl of water. But he says to Jesus, they say, you're a king. You know how easy it would have been for Jesus to deflect that? Do you know how many times his enemies tried to trap him with words? To ensnare him over and over and over again. And they were unable to do it. He could have easily danced away from Pilate. But he told him the truth. And he put in front of Pilate the choice of the ages. Imagine if the Roman governor had said, I kneel before you. Think of the difference in his destiny. Think of the opportunity that was presented to him. His wife's had a dream. He's an innocent man. Don't touch him. He could see through the deception of the religious leaders. And you and I are going to be asked to tell the truth. When Jesus said, you're right in saying I'm a king, he signed his death warrant. And he knew it. Are we going to be willing to tell the truth? Matthew, Luke chapter 5 is, is one of my... I, I enjoy this story a lot. Jesus is standing on the Sea of Galilee, and there's a crowd, and he borrows a boat. In verse 3, he gets into one of the boats. It belongs to Simon. It says, push out a little bit. He needs a platform to get a little distance from the crowd so he can speak to the people. When he's finished and the crowd's dispersing, he says he's got a message for Peter. In verse 4, when he'd finished speaking, he said, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Now, when this story starts, the fishermen are washing their nets. They fished all night. Galilee's a clear lake. They fish. They night fish. Fish won't strike in the daytime. And Peter answers, Master, we've worked hard all night, and we haven't caught anything. Now, this is the fisherman talking to the carpenter. And the carpenter's giving the fisherman fishing guidance. Master, <laughs> enjoyed your message. Good job, preacher. But we fished all night. And it wasn't a good night. And we've got the nets clean. And Jesus is saying, if you'll just push out into the debt, let, let down your nets. And then Peter, the, 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 it's the phrase where everything hinges. But because you say so, I'll let down the nets. You don't hear any optimism. You don't hear any enthusiasm. All right, he's not going, oh, here we go. No, okay. I'll line up with you. See, alignment doesn't usually come with a lot of enthusiasm. I got to make that adjustment? Okay. Because you say so. And then watch the outcome. 
When they'd done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. You see, if they thought this was going to happen, they'd have taken both boats out to begin with. This was not an alignment built on expectation. This was not a demonstration of great faith. This was, look, we don't want to embarrass the carpenter. Let's just, come on. Then they filled both boats so full that they began to sink. I mentioned Oral Roberts a session or two ago. He had a sermon on this passage, and he called it a net-breaking, boat-sinking load. (laughs) Because you say so. We're going to have to search for the truth. We're going to have to be willing to respond to the truth. And then we're going to have to be willing to align our lives with the truth. We're going to look at some very specific invitations to freedom. And it'll be easy to brush them aside and say, those aren't relevant to me. Or if we'll invite the Spirit of God into our lives to help us explore them, if we'll search for the truth as it relates to us, and we'll have the courage to respond to it and bring alignment to it, I believe in the next few days and weeks, we can experience freedom from God in ways we've never known it before. Because I don't believe His desire to help us has changed one little bit. But I have a secondary agenda. I would like you to become so familiar with the truth that you could help somebody else be free. You see, when you experience freedom, then you understand a pathway that you could invite somebody else to walk. Because in a season of deception, overwhelming deception, widespread deception, broad spread deception, we need people who understand the truth enough to help other people experience the freedom that comes from the truth. So that's my invitation to you in this session. Are you willing to say to the Lord, I want to be one of those people? Here's the invitation. Because I believe God takes us seriously. Lord, we offer ourselves tonight. Show us the truth that we might help other people be free. Now, that'll require some transparency on our part, some courage on our part. There'll be some people that'll reject the invitations. We'll have those anxious moments, well, what if I pray and nothing happens? What if you know the truth and you don't tell it? That's more frightening to me. You willing? Yes. All right, when we turn our hands to the Lord, let's receive. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word and its power and authority and its truth. We offer ourselves tonight as living sacrifices. As we walk through these weeks together and we open our hearts, we ask that you would give us ears to hear and eyes to see and hearts that can receive. Lord, we are on a search for truth. We want to be the people of truth. We want to say yes to you in obedience and humility. And Lord, I pray that as we say yes to you, that you'll open our eyes to the people around us that are searching, that they might know freedom that they might know peace in their minds and healing in their bodies and deliverance from things that have tormented them for years and years, that they they could be set free from oppression and heaviness and darkness. We praise you for it, Lord, for a moving of your spirit. May the name of Jesus be lifted up. May you receive the glory and the honor and the praise. Lord, we are weak and frail and broken, but in you, in you, we can run through a troop and leap over a wall. And we receive tonight all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you.